Hey YouTube fans, TCP back here. If you like what you see, make sure you click the subscribe button. Today we're going to be breaking down uh, NFL divisional teams, and we're going to start with the uh, AFC West. As you can see, Chargers and Broncos represented. So sit back and enjoy. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Triple Coverage Podcast. I'm here with the boys, James Up and Jay Up. Whoa, whoa. What's up, guys? And I'm Travis Sutton. Hello, and good afternoon, or morning, or night, whatever it may be. A good day, sir. Uh, <laughs> top of the morning <laughs> to you. Um, we're going to do some uh, divisional breakdowns in the coming weeks uh, since the draft took place, the NFL draft, um, to kind of get ready, get that mindset ready of how depth charts might be shaken out, guys that are kind of fantasy relevant. We're not really going to touch into IDP at all. We might mention some defensive or some different drafts here and there, but it's mostly just fantasy relevant guys for Dynasty and a little sprinkle of the redraft. Uh, redraft will start amping up and ramping up uh, as the summer comes on. But for now, AFC West, mm -hmm. Denver Broncos are on top of the list who had a, a pretty good draft. Uh, some yeah. good fantasy relevant guys coming out of that squad, especially Dynasty for sure. And they're only <laughs> top of the list because of the alphabetical order. I yeah. want to make sure we put that I don't up. think they're going to finish first in the division. Definitely not. I don't think we're calling shots. I will, though. Chargers are going to win the division. There you go. Shots fired. <laughs> Every year until they do. All right. So, All right, so Denver. Let's, let's go position by position. Let's do it. Uh, I just want to bring up a couple, I guess, little points of interest with the teams. Uh, last year, they finished 5-7. and seven. Uh, They were last place in, their, in this division. Uh, least points, four, and most points points against, so it wasn't very good last year. 4-4 four and four at home, 1-7 and seven on the road. So it wasn't very good uh, shakedown last year for those guys. There was some coaching changes, so there's some uh, adjustments that are going to be uh, made. Six of, of their assistants were let go last year, so they did keep the head coach, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, uh, and a couple other guys, but the main framework of that coaching staff is still there, but there's quite a bit of turnover going on over there, so just want to kind of bring that. That usually has an effect on how things play out for me the biggest the, the biggest uh, effect well the biggest change is obviously the starting quarterback I mean you got a bunch of guys that were there that didn't really do much and now you have Case Keenum who is going to be his first year in this offense too do we think that that's an upgrade is that I think it's an upgrade from Simeon's out and Osweiler's out so they keep Lynch who's on his rookie contract still and they obviously took uh, Chad Kelly with the last pick of the draft two years ago and they kept him on, on roster, which I think they should have. Uh, but Case Keenum, I think he's going to do well in this offense. I think it's better than what they had. Well, it was just last year they took Kelly, right? Yes. Oh, was it? Okay, last year, sorry. Not two years ago. What do you think is going on here? Um, in Denver? No. <laughs> they, they did that before. Technical difficulties. Uh, uh, we've, been having, we've been having some problems these days. Okay. Case Keenum, <laughs> definite upgrade. Uh, I think he's a good placeholder. I don't know for who necessarily. I don't think it's Paxton Lynch. Um, I think it says a lot that they didn't draft a quarterback. Everybody had him pegged for drafting the quarterback and drafting him fairly high because uh, they were at five. They Correct. were. Okay, so they ended up getting that bonus of uh, Bradley Chubb. Chubb falling to him. Yep. So, and then, but they didn't address uh, that position at all in the draft, and I think that says a lot to those guys like myself who've been kind of whispering Chad Kelly Keep, whispering. Eye, keep an eye out for him. Yeah. And yelling it. He was hurt pretty much all last year, so he was never really in the mix. But I heard some <laughs> some decent things coming out of there. And the fact that they didn't draft somebody says says a lot to me, that he's got a chance this year in uh, OTAs. Not mis necessarily <laughs> to be the starter, but no, to, I think he to solidify that uh, to a backup. Make, make the least. roster. Yeah. Well, I, no, I, think roster. A, I think it's a chance to, to pass up Paxton Lynch on the, on the depth chart, I think. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's almost a given. Okay, that's outlandish. Uh, what about running back spot? Yeah, Devontae Booker. Now, here, here's the thing. that You take Royce Freeman in the draft for semi-early, so does he automatically 
right away start off at, in the top two because he basically, for me, jumped ahead of David Williams and D'Angelo Henderson, who was on the depth chart. Henderson didn't really get that much of a chance. Devontae Booker, uh, to me, isn't the answer there. He had a chance and didn't do it that well. He had little little flashes, like you like to say, Travis, to where he showed he could do well, but then when given a big, you know, a big part of the load, he didn't do that great. Yeah, I, I don't never, think he's the answer. I never felt like he even really flashed. At least not enough for me to be like, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna invest in this backfield. Does anyone here think that Royce Freeman will not be the starter? Or not get the majority of the touches, let's say that. No, I think he's going to be a starter. Like, he'll also get the most fantasy points out of this group, correct? Yes, I believe okay. so. I, I agree as well. I think that their best chance to win games right away is to put in Royce Freeman. You have Keenum and Royce Freeman. I feel very comfortable with that, more than I would with Devontae Booker. But I just don't know because he's been on the team for a couple of years if he kind of gets a nod as a starter, at least through OTAs and the preseason. preseason. Yeah, right. I think they're going to name him number one for the preseason, but I think that Royce Freeman will win the job Do in you? the preseason. Well, yeah, I, me too. Like, I, just because he's been there for a while, like I don't feel like he's earned any any of that. I don't think he's... I, I feel like Royce Freeman's going to be the guy heading into the season. and I. Oh, okay, so we all think that. Be the, the backup. Um, I don't think they're going to give him, like, Booker the nod for anything. Um, unless Royce Freeman stumbles heavily, uh, I think it's his job to lose, really. That's how I feel, anyway. Yeah. They, they took another running back, though. Uh, or was he? Uh, Andre, yeah. a free agent, okay. Philip Lindsay. They, they took him uh, after the draft was over. But, uh, worst what case about, scenario. Uh, what about David Williams? David Williams, was he in this draft as well? I Miles, so they grabbed two of them. I do believe so. Yes. He's another big big size guy, kind of like uh, like Freeman as well. But they already have Freeman listed as a goal uh, the goal line back, and I think that worst case scenario, he gets the touchdowns in the season and vultures uh, away from Devontae Booker if Devontae Booker just has an amazing preseason somehow and maybe earns a job. I just don't see it happening. You want to move on to the receivers? Okay. Let's move along. Well, here's where I think fantasy-wise – uh, this is what helps. Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. They both had down years, and yes, they are on the wrong side of 30, both of them, and maybe their days are numbered in Denver, but this is where it's going to help you fantasy-wise by getting Case Keenum in there instead of having Trevor Simeon and Brock Osweiler as your starting quarterbacks, and even Paxton and Lynch last year a little bit. I think that this helps out Demarius Thomas and Sanders quite a bit, and I think they get back to being fantasy-relevant, both of them being in the top 24 as far as receivers, maybe even Demarius being a little higher, like in the top 15. De- definitely bounce back years uh, considering what was going on at quarterback uh, there last year. Right. I've already seen Sanders come out and saying stuff, and it's nice for them to know that they know who the guy is going to be going into the season. And there's no if ands, or buts about what's going on. And I think that situation is just more stable. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a bounce back year for both of those guys. Yeah, if you remember last year during the offseason, they were making it an open competition, and they didn't name the starting quarterback until almost right before the season started. So yeah. that's kind of what Sanders was talking about. They didn't know who it was going to be. It was a mess last year at QB, that's for sure. I do like the rookie Cortland Sutton stepping in. They have him on the depth chart as of right now as the number three receiver. And um, he's kind of in the mold of Demarius Thomas. Hopefully you can learn a little bit from him just by watching him. And in, in, uh, in You think he already jumped over Carlos Henderson? Well, Henderson plays behind Sanders. Right, but then you have Deshaun Hamilton as well. I think Deshaun Hamilton is kind of like Emmanuel Sanders. Like it's almost. I feel like they drafted... A bunch of slot replacements. Yeah. Now, replacements for Demarius and Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, yeah. I think they. I think they drafted the heir apparent. And, right. And I think they have. I, I love what they did by drafting us, uh, Cortland Sutton and. Uh, uh, Deshaun Hamilton. Yeah, Deshaun Hamilton. I think yeah they're in the mold of each other. Cor- Sutton uh, in the mold of DT and Hamilton in the mold of Sanders. Sanders is a guy you can put in the slot or on the outside. Mm-hmm. So if Sutton does come along, you put him on the outside and switch. Uh, <clears throat> Sanders into the slot, and if Hamilton comes along, you can keep Sanders on the outside and you got Hamilton in the slot. I think Carlos Henderson is going to be the odd man out. I haven't heard yeah, so do I. very glowing things. I, I heard a story they were talking about uh, he had a conversation with uh, Vance Joseph, or, or he did something, or I don't know if he tested positive or something, but the story is that he's like, no, it wasn't uh, weed, basically. It was like a, a, a pop, like a sucker, like a, a green sucker. They're in Colorado, who knows? So apparently... They didn't draft well the past few years, and some of those guys are not high-character guys. And I mm-hmm. think Isaiah McKenzie is another one of those guys I've heard. Uh, like, if he messes up or does something wrong, he's going to be gone, up, he's on the chopping block. So, yeah, I, I love what they did wide receiver-wise. Yeah, the offense looks good, and they're young. To me, dynasty-wise, Sutton and Deshaun Hamilton are both guys that I would be willing to take. Um, Sutton, obviously, higher than Deshaun Hamilton. 
But even I just, even redraft, I think Sutton has a little bit of Sutton does. That's it though. Outside yeah. of the top three, like the, the Hamilton is not for me, and redraft is not even a look. Uh, I don't know. It's too early for me to tell. I think uh, there could be something that happens to where Sutton's not even a look for me in redraft, uh, and Hamilton could be, or vice versa. Uh, it really, for me, I'm gonna have to wait and see how like training camp goes and, and all this stuff coming out uh, of how well they're doing or grasping the system. Because I mean, Hamilton's a good route runner. He's a better route runner than uh, Sutton. Mm-hmm. But Sutton's got some some skill and talent, but he's a little raw. So it's a wait and see for me on those guys. What about the tight end position? Like, is this the biggest bunch of just guys? Like, I feel like it's like looking at Dallas's depth chart. No, I think it's two guys. I think it's Jake Butt and then the guy they drafted, Fumagalli. I know. Why is uh, Howard Menz listed as a number one? Austin Trailer is number two. For some reason, Jake Butt's number three. And then Fumagalli is number five. Well, this is kind of a lot of this probably is going off of last year. I mean, Butt was hurt all last year. He didn't even play a snap, did he? So, no, no, I don't think so. No. Yeah. He was drafted hurt, so he okay. sat. I, I like Butt. And I think Butt eventually <laughs> wins this job. I like Butt, too. And Fumagalli. But I think uh, Jake Butt wins the job. I hope I that. What? Jake Butt wins the oh. number one. I hope, I, I hope I Like Bud is actually um, off the side so you can clip that. I Like Bud. Okay. You like that? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still worried I about think it. it's going to be both of those guys kind of because I think Fumagalli is a good uh, pass catcher as well. So He is. I think they're both good to be able to use both of those guys, I think. Tight end wasn't very good for them last year. It was it was a struggle. You couldn't really start anybody fantasy-wise, really. Almost um, the whole team offensively, though, was a struggle. Like, C.J. Anderson had a couple of good games, and you had Demarius Thomas had a couple of good games. Sanders, same thing at the start of the season. But you couldn't get any kind of consistency because it all comes back to quarterback play. Yeah, I agree. I think I agree. it's going to be a different outlook for them. I don't think they finished last in the division, though, this year. I do yes, think they, they improve. They finished dead last. They were five and eleven last year. You think they improve on five and eleven? I think they improve on their seven and nine standing. <laughs> seven Doesn't and nine. necessarily mean they have to have a better record, but I don't think they come in last. Okay. You want to move on to the Chiefs then? I do. Chiefs. Okay. I like this quarterback. I, I want to see just like everybody else is talking about him, Pat Mahomes. You have any notes on the Chiefs before we actually dive into the players? Uh, yeah, they won the division. Uh, the ten and six last year, six and two at home, four and four on the road. Uh, they were five and one in the division, so they pretty much ran through that division. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they won four. They were four and one in the last five games, so they finished pretty strong. Um, they lost to Tennessee. Who? Who? Yeah, Tennessee, Tennessee came out. And... Yeah, Tennessee squeaked into the playoffs. So yeah, uh, these guys also <clears throat> coaching changes. Uh, they seem to keep on losing offensive coordinators. Uh, first, it was Peterson who went to Philadelphia, mm-hmm. uh, and then he did what he did. Uh, then the guy that took over was Matt Nagy. Uh, who kind of had co-offensive coordinator with Brad Childress, uh, and now Nagy's gone to Chicago, uh, and a guy who's been there since 2013 with Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, who's been the running backs uh, coach, is now the guy who's taken over the offensive coordinator. So they still have the same defensive coordinator they've had the whole time Andy Reid's been there uh, since 2013. So he just keeps promoting from within, mm-hmm. basically. They seem to do good, and then they, they move on. I don't know if that's all them so far. It looked good. Nagy will be the true test, I guess. Uh, and if the, both of those guys do good, and then the Chiefs do good this year, does the enemy just bounce off and get a, a head coaching job somewhere? Yep. I don't know if he'll get a head coaching <laughs> job. I mean, he's he was a running backs coach for a long time. He played for the Chargers in the NFL, and uh, he was a decent running back. Um, that, is to me, bodes well for Kareem Hunt, because that's obviously the guy he's been working with hand-in-hand this whole time while he was a running backs you know coach. Wh- who else he worked with as a running back coach? Who? He was in Minnesota. Who was? The enemy? Yeah, 2006, 2010. He worked with Peyton back up there. Uh, Brad Childress was the head coach at the time. There you go. So this is a little family, this kind of little uh, group that's been together for a while there. But to I me, like another, another team with a new quarterback that is going to be new to the system, and Pat Mahomes, who's taking over for Alex Smith, who was let go or traded. Uh, who had his best year last year. He had his, a great year. I, that probably made it a little harder for Kansas City, but it didn't seem like it, the way they, they, they couldn't wait to shut the door on him. Yeah, I think it was fun. And they, they saw what they saw with Mahomes in practice and OTAs <laughs> and during the season and said that the kid looks amazing, and it was almost like, when can we get this guy out of here and Alex Smith so that we can get uh, Pat Mahomes on the field, and here he is. Cool. Apparently, he's... Got all the goods is what they're saying. Well, they didn't have. Well, they think so. They didn't mm-hmm. have a first round pick this year because they traded away last year to move right. up to get him. Correct in the draft last year. So, so yeah, they definitely are all in on this guy. Was he tenth? Taking tenth? 
Yes, yeah, and, pick last year? and I'm not worried about Chad Henney or Matt McGloin, who's his backups. Uh, it's clearly it's Pat Mahomes' job. That's uh, what I was going to bring up too. I like the fact that the veterans they did bring in to back up Mahomes are not somebody that's going to take the job from him in any way or means. It's, no. it's Pat Mahomes' job. Even if he struggles, it's Pat Mahomes' job. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think that fantasy relevance wise, in a rate standard league, you think that he finishes or could finish as a QB one, scoring wise. I think there's a possibility that he could. Um, I think he can. I think he's a back-end quarterback one uh, because of the weapons they added. Obviously, Hunt's in the second year, and we'll get the rest of their their lineup here, but I, I love their offense this year. Love it, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's going to be growing pains. I'm finally uh, high on Sammy Watkins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think... Um, well, he's, and Pat Mahomes could get him the ball. That's what I'm saying. Uh, That's for sure. And there's not 15 guys to choose from like he, like Sammy Watkins and everyone else. I mean, but there's a few. There's the Kelseys and the Hills and the you know mm-hmm. the Hunts. I mean, there's a few there. Uh, those targets are going to be, you know, spread around a little bit. But I think there will be growing pains. We only saw one game from this kid, uh, so mistakes will be made. So I don't know if he finishes as a QB one. He definitely could. Um, but I think maybe he just finishes just outside, but right around that area. Is this the team you picked to finish last in the division? No. Wow, so you're going to go with the Raiders, huh? Yes. Chargers are going to lose the division. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so let's move on. Uh, obviously, behind Kareem Hunt, anybody worth even talking about? You have Spencer Ware there. You have Sharkandrick West, Damian Williams, Kerwin Williams. Anybody worth talking about even dynasty <laughs> They try to get every every running back with the last name starts with a W. Where West Williams Williams. They got them all locked in. None of these guys, at all, you take away from Kareem Hunt except for maybe in the passing game, with West. I don't even think Spencer Ware vultures that many touchdowns away from Kareem Hunt. I think that they're pretty much going to use Kareem Hunt as an every down back for the most uh, for the most of the part. Here's my <clears throat> here's my feeling as far as the whole Spencer Ware thing. Like obviously he got injured at the in the preseason last year and he missed the entire season, never came back. He was a good running back. Not great, but he was a good running back when he was there with Kansas City the year before. So they obviously to me must be worried about his health or maybe he's not going to come back 100% by adding Damian Williams and Kerwin Williams. Like they usually would add like younger guys to like just you know, kick but, the tires. And see I, but I don't think, think all five of those guys make the roster. They probably won't. But I just think, the fact they brought those guys in right. makes me think that they're not thinking that Ware's going to be 100 percent healthy. So maybe Ware, Ware, and Damian Williams to me are the names that don't. Um, I don't know. Well, Damian I mean, Williams, all right. I mean, that's possible. I guess. I mean, Williams did well in Miami when um, right. when uh, Ajaya got traded, and it was Williams and Drake going back and forth until Williams got hurt, and then Drake just took over that job. But actually, Williams played pretty well. After Ajayi left in Miami. So, I mean, that doesn't really fit with the narrative of they're worried about Spencer Ware if they brought in another guy that got hurt. I think it's, I think uh, we see a lot of depth. Teams are just building and building depth. And it's not necessarily anybody that's really going to battle, uh, barring a couple of injuries. Like, there's so many injuries away from getting meaningful impact, fantasy wise, for sure, mm-hmm. uh, that, yeah, they just look like depth. And yeah, they might not make the roster, like James said. Um, so yeah, I don't think so. I'm not Hunt's the only guy I'm interested in, really. For sure. Wide top receivers. Hunt top twelve. Yes. We're very yeah. Yeah, for All sure. Right. So let's go uh let's move on to wide receivers. Let's do it. Your boy Tyreek the Freak Hill. Tyreek the Freak. Number one, and you bring in Sammy Watkins to be the number two, and they actually paid him sixteen million a year, I believe, to bring him in, which was pretty high, I thought, for Watkins. Um I think that Los Angeles, the Rams wanted to keep him, but they didn't want to pay the price tag of that. So he moved on to Kansas City. It's his third team in three years. Brand new offensive coordinator, but the whole Chiefs team has a brand new offensive coordinator, so it doesn't really matter. See, that's why I think this could be a high-powered offense. I think that Sammy Watkins need, needs a quarterback with a strong arm and a new situation, a fresh start. Even though he's had, like you just said, his third team in three years, he needs a fresh start. And I think that, I think I don't know why, but I just feel like he fits in this situation. Because Tyree Kill, even though he's technically a wide receiver one on the team, as far as production-wise, I think that you can play Tyree Kill pretty much anywhere, outside, inside, and I think that Sammy Watkins is going to be the same. He's mostly an outside receiver, but either one of these two guys can, can be good in the slot, and when you have Travis Kelsey there as well, I think that Sammy Watkins is not going to be seeing the number one corner, or the number two maybe even. So you have Kelsey and you have Tyree Kill. He's probably going to see the second corner or third possibility at some, at, in some cases, and I think that he does very well going against guys that aren't the number one corner. Sammy? Yeah. 
I don't think they're. You think they put the number one corner on Sammy? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And then Tyree kills. <laughs> Ty, Tyree kills finished wide receiver like six last year. Okay. Because he killed because there was no one and he, that was against the number one corners. Okay. So, okay. I don't think that just correlates to Sammy will just get like twos and threes. I don't think you put a three on Sammy Watkins. I mean that's crazy. A I think, two for sure. Uh, I think it'll. It just depends. Like if they're playing a team where a guy's like a lockdown guy who's on the outside, then that's probably gonna be Sammy because they're gonna move move Hill around. Um, I think Sammy probably. I don't see Sammy doing a whole lot of slot, um, but you never know what they're gonna do over there. It's it's weird to me because offensive coordinator has been the running backs coach for so long. Like, how's this gonna translate? I think a lot of it is Reed too as well. Um, he's a good offensive minded coach. He'll be helping out. I think it's tough, man, because you got Kelsey who, who you have to get the ball to. He's such a playmaker. It's gonna be interesting to see how it shakes out because nobody. Who really has a rapport with with Mahomes at this point? And now Sammy got the raw deal last year going to the Rams, not having a, a whole offseason to work with Goff and those guys. So it, it'll be very interesting to see. I think Sammy's had a, had a, a rough shake going to the Bills. is not a great place for any wide receiver to go to, especially the quarterback issues that they've had the last few years. So I don't think we've really seen what Sammy Watkins is capable of and what everybody expected from him when he was drafted. I'm pretty high on Watkins this year myself too, like with you, Travis. I think that uh, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if he outproduced Tyreek Hill fantasy wise, as far as like fantasy points at the end of the season. It wouldn't shock me. I, I still think Hill finishes first, but if you said Watkins is going to finish ahead of him, I'd, I'd be like, yeah, you could be right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Hill could definitely still finish. That was a good ahead, spin. ahead of Sammy. Uh, yeah, nice, 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 nice <laughs> God dang. Uh, just because he's been in that system already, and Sammy's going to have to get used to that system. I don't know how tough it will be to get used to or how much. They already have plays for Hill. They already got plays for Kelsey. Like, is Sammy kind of the odd man out? Like, I don't know. Like, I still think Kelsey's the number one option. Yeah, I mean, he's a, to me, he's the number one guy. Like, yeah. That's the guy you got to get the ball to the most. So, in the wide receiver, just wide receivers, not tight end wise, who's the number three? Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins, and then who? You have Demarcus Robinson, DeAnt- uh, DeAnthony Thomas, Chris Conley. Like who? Uh, There's no one worth drafting at, you, outside you of Dieter. That's a fun name to say. So is Jehu Chesson. That's kind of a fun name so to no? say. Yeah, okay. I don't think so. I think the three, the three headed monsters, Kelsey Watkins and Hill, and, okay. and everything and then, that is just scraps. Obviously, Kelsey top three or top two, pretty much tied in. I mean, as solid as you one. can get. Yeah, maybe even tied at one because of Gronk's injuries. So, Travis Kelsey, you're all in on him, obviously. Yes. So, okay, so that's why I like the offense. I mean, you have a top two tight end. You have a top ten receiver from last year in Tyreek Hill. You're adding the top talent like Sammy Watkins with a big arm quarterback like Pat Mahomes and a second-year running back who just – didn't he run the, win the rushing title last year? Yes. I mean, it looks to me like it has every sign to be a high-powered offense as long as that offensive line can keep up. Uh, it's a fantasy wonderland. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, they always say like a, a young quarterback's best friend when they're just learning the offense is a good tight, tight end. end. And you have one of the best in the game right there. Everybody's mm-hmm. friend is a good tight end. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Well, we moving on to the Los Angeles Chargers. As the Chargers. Let's do it. Travis, give us some nuggets. All right. Last year, 9-7. and seven, Second place in the division. They made a little run at the end of the year. They were 4-1 and one in their last five. 5-3 uh, five and three at home and uh, 500 on the road. Head coaches all return, all the same. There's no changeover. I think they're primed and ready to kind of just keep on doing what they were doing. They kind of nailed their draft as well, mm-hmm. uh, especially on the defense side of the ball. Like, they're secondary. Their defense got even stronger, and it was pretty strong last year. I know. So, Rivers, nothing behind him. I mean, do we even have to spend any time? Rivers is the guy. You got Geno Smith and Cardell Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Joke. Three years. I think Rivers got three years left, I think. Right on to the running backs. Yes. Here's where it gets interesting. Obviously, Melvin Does Gordon. It? Obviously, Melvin Gordon's the surefire number one. Who is the backup? Uh, for me, the backup is Justin Jackson, and Austin Eckler is like a third down kind of change of pace guy. You know what the word is? Who they were looking at in the draft, but he didn't fall to them? Who? What, what running back they were looking to take? Who? Who? Royce Freeman. So that's okay, a, and then Justin okay. Jackson, isn't he the, a bigger... Justin Jackson is the type of running back that if Melvin Gordon got hurt... Justin Jackson would probably get the first and second down roll, and Austin Eckler is not as big, but I think Austin Eckler would still have fantasy value. Yeah, but Justin Jackson's not all that big either. He's 5'11", 200, so he's kind of a tweener-ish kind of guy. He's not too small, not too big. But yeah, he probably is going to be the guy that's going to come in and get the 
Thumper. Yeah, because everyone just assumes, okay, like Gordon's number one, Eckler was the backup, so if Gordon gets hurt, Eckler's going to get, the, you know, he's going to be the starting running back. But no. I think it would be Justin Jackson would be the starting running back, and Eckler would still have the same role. I, 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 I think he'd still have that third down pass catching role, which is still in a PPR so league if you, is fantasy relevant. So if you're in a league, redraft or dynasty, and you do have Melvin Gordon, and you were like, you know what, I want to handcuff him just a little bit to make sure that in case Melvin Gordon does get hurt, you're taking who first? Jacks in a PPR because now PPR league Eckler spots kind of is what it is. The ceiling's there. Um, Justin Jackson is like optimally. I wouldn't want to take any of them. I would but if you're like, hey, I got to handcuff this guy. Roll with Melvin Gordon, but um, I guess probably Justin Jackson because yeah, like, I agree. If it's an injury that takes out Gordon, I'd rather have a guy that gets more work. Okay. I don't think Eckler is going to be Danny Woodhead uh, no. in that offense. So okay. Uh, move on to wide receivers for the Chargers. Stud. They got their studs still there. Now that he uh, had a full season not getting hurt, everybody's all back on the Keenan Allen train. Keenan Allen, number one, is be a top five wide receiver this year most likely. Number two, though, this is where it gets, for me, I was going through and uh, doing my little notes here. It got very muddled after Keenan Allen because you have Tyrell Williams, you have Travis Benjamin, you have Mike Williams, who didn't play really at all last year, and... Where do where do these guys fit in? Uh, to me, the number two at the end of the season should be Mike Williams because I think that he's got the most talent out of these guys, but they're going to obviously have Tyrell Williams as their second guy. Correct? I think it's going to be a camp battle between Mike Williams and Tyrell Williams for the number two. Tyrell has a slight edge right now, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. he actually has a rapport with Phillip Rivers for the last couple of years. So he's he's been there longer. And but if you're drafting, who are you taking ahead in a redraft? Are you taking Tyrell Williams or Mike Williams? I think they go around the same spot. I don't just take Mike Williams just because he came from Clemson and he was highly touted. And I know he has a the draft pedigree, but that's why I would take Mike Williams first. Well, I in a dynasty Mike, for sure. I would put even in well, a dynasty, but I'm talking about just in general. I I would kind of look at Tyrell Williams. He's got the rapport yeah. with Rivers. It's not like he's just going to be like, okay, see you later, Tyrell. Mike Williams is healthy now. So who's the slot? Um, I kind of think they they would uh, if Mike Williams is back is is right. They spent the draft capital on the guy. You don't just let that guy hang around and do nothing if you take him in the first round as high as they did. So, And I think Tyrell Williams is probably going to be out of there anyway after this year. So I think if he's healthy and ready to go, I do think they try to get that kid. I, in, in the, in the, in the, is in Tyrell, the Tyrell's in a free agent year? Um, I'm not exactly sure if he's a free agent, but I think he's ripe to either be cut or maybe he's a free agent. I'm not oh, sure. Cut. I'd have to double check it <clears throat> after this year. Wow. Okay. okay. You uh, like Tyrell Williams that much? I just think he's got. I think he's got a rapport with Philip Rivers. I but think that he looks to him. Solidified a roster spot that he's solidified a roster spot. Yes. Do mm-hmm. not get let go. Like, like yeah. Tied to, yeah. Hundred percent. I, I, don't I think, think Travis Benjamin or yeah, Isaiah Burse, whatever no, that was. Andre Patton. Yeah, these Benjamin's guys are the ones that are guy worth talking about. And I don't even know how long. What about Dylan he's, Cantrell? He's, uh, he's Texas rookie. Tech. He's the he's rookie that came in. He's the dark horse to kind of see how he does. I guess the in the OTAs and and. Spring training or training camp and everything. I think they would cut Travis Benjamin before they cut Tyrell Williams. Me too. But okay, oh, if if, yeah. if one of these guys game. could play the slot, who would you? Keenan Allen's obviously outside for sure. Mike Williams is to me is too big to play the slot. Tyrell's even too big to play. The That's slot. what I'm saying. Travis so, Benjamin for the slot. Like how yeah. how can you guys say they're too big to play the slot? Uh, you got guys mm-hmm. like Larry Fitzgerald that play the slot. You got big guys that play the slot. That's because of age, though. It, but but your body type is, doesn't change whether you're young or old. Your age doesn't matter. Like, you're saying he's too big. That has nothing to do with age. They've never played the slot. Have they never? Yeah, as far as I know. <laughs> maybe in high school, <laughs> Pop Warner, maybe, I don't know. How's that booty hill talking? Go find me something that says something different, and then... <laughs> okay. Go ahead. All don't, right, don't at me. Braden Bowman. Hunter Henry, tight end. Or do we think That's right it. now Hunter Henry is at top, what, seven? Top five tight end? I'm not, I don't know if I'm, gone. Really? Okay. I don't know if I'm ready to to crown him as a as a top tight end. I mean, there's not many tight ends, so it's not easy. I mean, it's not difficult to be a top tight end with all the injuries and all the inconsistencies there are in the tight end spot. But everyone's literally all in on like, I keep seeing polls on Twitter and all these different trade evaluations. Oh, heat checks on this guy. Where is he at? And people are like starting to throw out like back in first round picks in a dynasty league for Hunter Henry or very early second round picks. And I don't, I don't know if I'm invested that much in Hunter Henry. Like what? Other than uh, Kelsey, Gronk, Ingram, Ertz, Ertz, uh, who that's already is? four. Um, I think like the Cameron, Cameron Braids, uh, no, they're in the top Cameron five. Braid above him? 
Who would you take above? Reed, yeah. Reed or Olsen? Oh, uh, Olsen. Or are we talking redraft? I would take Olsen, yes. If we're talking dynasty, then I would go Hunter Henry because there was a huge age gap there. But uh, there's, yeah, there's a couple of names outside of those guys you named that I can easily see possibly having a better year. Delaney Walker. No, no. Who would you take above him? In a redraft? All those guys, yeah. In a dynasty, probably I would take Kelsey. I would take Gronk. I would take Ertz for sure. Other than those guys, that was the question. Um, I, I don't know. They give me a set of teams. But off the top of my head, yeah, I'd say he's probably like number six. Would you take Ebron above him? No. Would you take Doyle above him? No. Would you take <laughs> Burton above him? No. But there's, I don't think, I I don't think they're that far off. I think yeah. he can finish top seven. Yeah. I, I think, think he's a big red zone target for Phillip Rivers. It's almost like he's getting it by default. That's what, that's what I'm trying to make it seem because like. Because tight ends aren't that deep. Dude. Right. Talk about it every that's year. why he's getting it by default. There are like four or five good ones, and then everything else is just a shot in the dark. Oh, Evan Ingram, I'm taking ahead of him too. Yeah, that was another guy. Well, yeah, that, that was, that was, those were the guys in that. So by default, he's number six or seven to me. And like we said before, no more yes. Antonio Gates, well, so he's, he's still, got the job that's, himself. That's the thing. He's been kind of up in that up in that area with kind of Gates there, and now that Gates is gone, and literally there's really nobody else there. Virgil Green. I think it's very likely that he's right in the six seven area. Virgil Green came in from Denver just to give um, the Chargers their playbook. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, moving on to the last team in the division, the Oakland Raiders. Travis's last placed pick. The soon to be Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, sir. Uh, last year they were six and ten, uh, five hundred uh, at home, two and six on the road. They kind of slid into the dirt the last uh, five games, or one and four to finish the season. And there were lots and lots of changes upon changes in the coaching staff there. Mm-hmm. So they got uh, John Gruden, the ten-year, hundred million dollar man, and I think all the decisions are gonna. The buck stops with John Gruden, basically. I think he's the end-all, be-all as far as what's going on, the way they're drafting, the guys they're bringing in, obviously to bring all, all these veterans. Uh, hopefully there's a plan because the draft didn't look that good, in my opinion, and some of their moves have been a little sketchy. But heading into the season, you got Derek Carr. and Mr. Inconsistent. Nothing really behind him. E.J. Manuel, Connor Cook, yeah. Nothing nothing behind Derek Carr. It's, his, it's obviously his job for the next foreseeable future uh he's is he a top 12 uh fancy quarterback jay you have him on a couple teams uh, at least one team no i have him on one team i think that he can get back into the top 15 i don't see him as a top 12 i, I think he could finish definitely 13 14 or 15 um quarterback two uh, he'll this, have he'll have weeks though he'll have weeks where he'll get you top five production because he has that kind of this team reminds kind of play. this team reminds me of the rams Going into last season, when we were all well, I was very down on, on Gurley, and and we had Goff as our starting quarterback, who just did okay. They had a bunch of young receivers who were just like okay, and they severely underperformed. And then they all come out last year, and Gurley is a leading running back, and they have all these weapons, and Goff looks like you know a superstar. I think that Raiders just had a very down year. It was a mess there. They were all over the place. They had a lot of drops with Cooper, a lot of drops with Crabtree. It was just kind of all over the place. I think now. They've gotten rid of Crabtree. They brought in a, another receiver, that's a couple receivers actually, and kind of changed up the offense a little bit. They stick with Marshawn Lynch, who's the running back now, but they brought in Doug Martin for depth. I think Doug Martin, my personal opinion, is better than DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard. So I think he is de facto number two behind Marshawn Lynch. And I think that even though they're very old running backs, it's it's a decent combination of one big bruising back and then another back that can catch that he still. Like can get the job done as a backup. See, I would have, I would have liked the Raiders to, to bring in a rookie running back uh, with the how deep it was this year at running back position for the rookies. I would have liked them to bring in a rookie running back to kind of push Lynch rather than bring in Doug Martin. But to me, it keeps them open that in the next year or two when Lynch retires, they could easily cut Doug Martin after the season too and scrap all of it and get another running back if they wanted to. Like They're not really tied down to any four of these guys. They're all in their last year or they have a two-year contract left, and after that, they're, they're gone. And they're not really paying any of them much at all. So to me, it's just a bunch of guys, but they'll get the job right. done. Lynch and Doug just Martin, a bunch of guys. yeah, but they're vets that have done it before in the past. They've had good seasons before. They've had you know well over a 1,000-yard seasons, and they, can't, they look to me like they can still produce. I want to see what they do with Lynch because if you remember last year with Del Rio, he came out right before the start of the season mm-hmm. and said, I want to keep Lynch's carries under 200, uh, under 200 carries for the whole season to keep him fresh for the playoffs. 
which they obviously didn't make the playoffs, but he stood true to that. And you remember the first part of the season, like Lynch was nowhere to be found until the very end. Once you hit like late November, early December, then they started using Lynch more and he was actually fresh. You, now you have Gruden come in. Does he look at it the same way and be like, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep him under this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to split time between him and Doug Martin. Like, what does he do now? Well, tell us. What do you think he does? I think he splits. To me, Gruden is a quarterback guy. He's been a quarterback guy when he wasn't coaching. Even when he was doing the Monday Night Football in the, in the booth, he was the, the quarterback guru, you know, quote, unquote. So, if anything, I think this helps Derek Carr. But I think that's what's going to be is mostly a passing offense. I think he's going to use he's going to use a hell out of Cooper. He's going to use Martavis Bryant. He's going to use Jordy Nelson. He's going to use Ryan Switzer. I think it's going to be a passing offense. So I don't really know what they're going to do with this mixed match. Well, if, if, if it's going to be a pass first type of offense, you would think that Doug Mar- that would favor Doug Martin in the pass catching as a running back. If you had to pick one in a PPR league, are you going Marshawn Lynch who? I mean, let's be honest, doesn't get that many catches, or at least it doesn't seem like it. But I think Lynch will have touchdowns. Lynch will have the touchdowns. Lynch right, that's why I think he's the goal line guy. I think it's going to be, I think these two guys finish very close together in the fantasy scoring. Regardless if it's one, one ahead of the other, I think they're all finished within, you know, four or five spots of each other in the fantasy. If they, if they both stay healthy, that is. But yeah, I think that it's wide open for the running game. I think that he can possibly even go, like, who's the hot, who has a hot hand? Go with Dwayne Washington and Jalen Rashard for a couple of uh, you know drives. Like it could be anything. Which is which is why I don't want to take any of them in a fantasy. Right, but if you had to take one, I would have. I think that Doug Martin has a better chance than, than Marshawn. But you're, you're right. Really at the think? end of the season, if you're at the end of the season and you need a running back to play for your fantasy playoff week 14, 15, 16, I'd rather have Marshawn Lynch because this is towards the end of the season. They're going to ground and pound. He'll still, like you said, get the touchdowns and the goal lines. But as far as overall fantasy value wise, I like Doug Martin more than Marshawn Lynch. I think, I, I, think, I think Martin's done. I think he's. I, I think Lynch has it the entire time as long as he stays healthy. Yeah, even when it gets towards. But well, who's the pass catching back then? Uh, well, now saw it before they used Jalen Rashard. Right, but now they have Doug Martin. So don't you think that Doug Martin's a little bit better than Jalen Rashard or no? At this point in their in their careers, yes. I don't know if he is. Okay, so so <clears throat> we all agree that. Uh, Oakland had a down year and things were not really working out for them. And in that down year, Marshawn Lynch, he got right around the 200, 207 carries. Uh, He had 890 yards, 91 yards, 891 yards and seven touchdowns uh, with like 30 catches in there too, or 20 catches. Um, So he did well. Like he's, I still think he has something in the tank. Is he Marshawn Lynch of the young, younger years? No. No. Is he necessarily beast mode? No. But I don't think they need that. I think they, what he has is enough uh, and they got some guys to spell him and, and whatever, and he'll still get a decent workload. I would much rather have Marshawn Lynch. Like like you, Jay, I'm off, I'm off Martin. Martin, if he does well and does well, cool. I'm happy with missing out on that boat. But if I take a chance on that guy and he shits the bed, and uh, I'll be like, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I will kick myself for a while for doing that. Um, they did bring in uh, an, a UDA. Uh, guy, uh, Chris Warren out of Texas. So they do have another big back on the roster. So, I mean, kind of like last year, they had Elijah Hood, who was kind of a mold of a bigger back guy. He couldn't get off the practice squad, uh, really. So They just cut him, too. Did mm-hmm. you see that? I, yeah. I was surprised at that because he's he hasn't even been there for two seasons. So he must really just couldn't grasp it, or he just was having issues because... Yeah. They cut bait on him pretty quick. Well, he was undrafted. I mm-hmm. understand, but like with the, what you have at running back for the Raiders... Like, the, uh, Marshawn Lynch is already, he already turned 32. He turned 32 years old. And yes, I think he will get goal line opportunities. He'll be 33 at the start of the season. Oh, no. No, oh, he April just turned 22. 22. Okay. He gotcha. just turned 32. Uh, I think he will get goal line opportunities, but he, has, he scored seven touchdowns last year. Like, that's where all of his fantasy points came from because 890 yards is not that much. Mm-hmm. It's not? No. no. Off of 200 yards or 200 carries? It's just, to me, it's just like an average guy. It's not something I want on my fantasy team. I don't want him like running back one or two. An occasional flex guy? Okay, can cool. We, can we stop with the argument of, I don't want this guy as my number one? Clearly, he's not in the conversation to be your number one running back, right? Can we agree on that? So that shouldn't be a rebuttal of, like, I don't want him as my number one. He would be a good number two. He'd be mm, a guy you no, could throw in. I don't want him as my number two, then. How about that? Do you want I want him to mention number one. Wow, okay, cool. Yeah, I'd say, if he was my number I just, three. I, I disagree. I like Marshawn Lynch. I think he is the vet, a vet, veteran guy that you want on your team to get you into the next year. Yeah, you can cut bay with him after this year or whatever it is, but he's the good vet guy 
who will get you what you need. What do you like think, in a, in a dynasty league, what do you think you can get from Marshawn Lynch right now if you were to say, hey, look, I'll give you that vet depth guy for you to make your championship run type of thing? Mm, you're not going to get a whole lot because of the amount of time. That pretty much is like Larry Fitzgerald. Like this very well could be the last year you get it. That's what I think. One year, so. Uh, depending on your needs and what you're willing to pay, like what you get from them, you better be happy. If you want to get rid of them, mid third, be happy with what you get. If you're lucky, you could get a late second, but yeah, a third. I think a third is reasonable, definitely reasonable. Okay. To me, I don't know. To me, not to, before we just get off of this, because I want to just make this clear. The, the whole Marshawn Lynch thing for me is that he knows that he, the writing's on the wall. Like he's probably going to retire at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. I don't think his heart is in it. Like I, I I'm, I'm going to give my all to this team, this and that. I think if Rudin comes in and starts poking him the wrong way, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's like, hey, I'm going to split you 50-50 with, with Doug Martin because we're going to do this and then we're going to do a committee. And Lynch is like, you know what? I don't, I don't need this, man. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Lynch is that type of guy to where he'll just leave. He doesn't care. He's the guy that's getting in a fight in the middle of the field, and yes, he was protecting his uh, his, his friend on the Chiefs or whatever, but you guys not cared about getting kicked out of that game. He's like, whatever. No, he went and got on the subway. He was like hanging out with fans. He doesn't care. I agree. His heart's not in it, is what I'm saying. So I agree. if he comes I just, in, I disagree. <laughs> if he comes I in and Gruden disagree. is poking him the wrong way and says, "Hey, look, man, uh, you're not taking a back seat, but we're gonna do a 50-50 split with you and Martin." Lynch is gonna be like, "I'm not doing a split." He's gonna be like, "Beast mode out." Yeah, I, I, I don't feel that way <laughs> How about, about for uh, sure. Marshawn, and uh, I feel like the type of coach that Gruden is, I think he's kind of. I think there's a reason why he has a lot of bets on that team, and I think. It's, it, I don't think it's going to be a situation like that. I don't feel like it is. It could be very well. It could be. Um, I, 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 I feel like Marshawn Lynch sometimes cares too much, which is why he gets into the situation. He cared too much, which is why he ran out and got in that scuffle. And he didn't mm. get in a fight. He didn't mm. get in a fight with anybody. He tried to get his cousin out of the way, and a ref was behind and touched him, whatever it was, and he touched the ref. So he didn't get in a fight with anybody. He sprinted out on that field, though, looking for action. I mean, if it, it was your brother, no, he didn't. He went out there to get his cousin out of the mix. Who was on the other team. Yeah. If it your brother was, was not... on the other team and you saw him about to get into some deep crap in the league want... and doing whatever. What, no, what with, would, with helmets on? Like, helmets like, hurt? Yeah. It's not about getting hurt. Like, it's about putting your team first. Them. Correct. Putting your team first. Correct. By, so doing, by guys, running out there. You guys on opposite teams, that comes before blood. <laughs> Um, what I'm saying is that it, no one had a gun to him. If it was, that, like, if that it was, has nothing to do with anything. Yes, it does. It does. Blood, what is thicker than anything? Blood. Yeah, but that's it's what, a football that's game, though. It's not, not a game, it's not a game fight. Yeah, he's not getting jumped on the streets, right? So if he's getting love for your family, what, what what are you guys talking no, about right now? You, Travis, you're you talking about a football crazy. game. You know how many guys are related on the on the thing? They don't <laughs> sprint out to the field. How many guys when their cousins getting in a push, a push and shutting match? How many, like how many other times have you seen it? Zillion. How many other times have you seen it? Everybody's family members. How many are. other times have you seen it where a guy runs runs on the field to save another guy on another team, regardless if it's a brother? Like how many other times have you seen it? Because I never saw it before this. So that makes it. So it's never happened. Not okay. Not justifiable or understandable, at least. To me, it's not. No, not in a football game. No. I'm sorry. I want to wow. be with you on this. I, I just, I, wow. I can't. I would, uh, I will not ever fault a guy for stepping up for his family. Like, if he went out there and threw punches or did something dirty like that, that'd be a completely different story. But he didn't. He went there to get somebody out of trouble, to save somebody from getting in over their head and getting and, and completely suspended his... or fined or whatever it was. He was looking out for family. That's and now it. he's suspended. Okay. Now he's in trouble. He's the one that's getting fined. How does that help your team? How does that help your if situation? If he would have not have touched the ref, do you think anything? Yeah, yeah, because he happen? still ran, ran out of the field with, I, I don't know if he had his helmet, I think he strapped on his helmet and then ran out of the field, but somebody coming from the sidelines on the field is automatic. Like, you can't do that. You can't do it in the NBA, you can't do it in the, in the majors, you can't do it in any sport from the sideline, run onto the field with the active players yet, and yet, get into a scuffle. Yeah, it happens in the heat of the moment. Very rare. A lot of things happen in the heat of the moment. But that's so, the first time that's happened. Correct. So what does that mean, though? There's because a first you look at, for everything. You look at guys like the AJ Green and Jalen Ramsey. Like that was a straight up like UFC move where yeah, he choke slammed. Apples and oranges. Okay, but what I'm saying is that no one sprinted out to the field, regardless if it was family or not. No one sprinted out on the field, and everybody came out okay. Like no one got hurt, no one got suspended. So, so his so his cousin gets in a fight on the field. They all have helmets on. No one's getting hurt. Chances are pretty good. No one's getting suspended. I'm saying the difference is is that you would do that with your family if someone had a gun to them. If someone's mugging them or trying to jump them. In the real world. Trying to, in the real so world. If somebody was trying to jump your brother, you wouldn't do anything. You'd be like, no, you just no, said he, he would. would. He can handle himself. I just said I he would. just said he would. 
I'm saying that if James was playing in a football game, so what's and I was like off to the side in the sidelines, and he started getting into it with another player, yeah, I would stand up and I would look and make sure everything was cool, but I'm not going to sprint out into the field and, and interject myself into it, because now you're taking it out of the ref's hands. That's what the refs are there for. Okay. Let the refs break it up. Okay. Everything's going to be fine. Okay. So no, I instead can, you interject can, yourself into it. I can, I can imagine that there's a, a train of events that would make you do more than just get up and look and be like, oh, okay, if you saw things... Chad Kelly. Exactly. If you saw things <laughs> escalating or doing whatever, there would come a point where nothing would matter. You would not think about any of that. You would think about your family and your brother. I can say that. That's it, it wasn't his brother. That was his it's, cousin, right? It's family. It was his cousin. It's family. I, um, cousin just for the record, cousin, I would 100% not do it for my family. cousin. I mean, I have some cousins that I would, some exactly. cousins that I wouldn't. Well, we make that decision when it happens. Can we move on to the wide receivers, or you guys still want to keep going on this? No, I'll go on the wide receivers. <laughs> All right. We haven't had one of those in a while. Wide receivers. It's good to have those. Yeah, it is. Amari it's, it's, Cooper. It's kind of fun. Number one wide receiver, Amari Cooper. Number two, Jordy Nelson. Number three listed, Martavis Bryant. Two of those are newly acquired, Jordy Nelson and Martavis. Do you think that that's an upgrade from Michael Crabtree and the latter? Cordell uh, Patterson? Yeah. Uh, I think that as a whole, it is, yes. Yeah, I agree. Okay, it is. so it, what's, what kind of talent do we see? Where do you see Jordy Nelson finishing as a wide receiver? He's listed as wide receiver two. He's 32, I think, almost 33 years old. Does his value go up or down from where it was last season? I don't think it goes anywhere. I think it stays the same. I think it's the same. It can't go down much. It's like that all, was a bad year last year. It's all dependent on how healthy he is. Uh, oh, let's and, and let's assume got, he plays the 16 games and Derek Carr also plays the 16 games. Is there any chance or any um, any anything that you guys can see that, that puts Jordan Nelson in the talk of a wide receiver one range? Or nope. is that just completely gone forever? Gone. Okay. Um, I don't know. the realm completely? Like possible? it's not even possible? I think Cooper is a slam dunk wide receiver one with him getting rid of uh, Crabtree. I think he is. Okay. But I don't think Nelson comes anywhere near what he came with in Green Bay with so, Aaron Rodgers. Okay, that's not what we're that's not what we're talking about. Well, it is. You said wide receiver one, and I'm saying no. Wide receiver two. Um, <clears throat> like I'm. I'm okay. How do you drop? How far do you drop him? <laughs> so uh, you're saying he can't finish as a wide receiver one in any realm possible? Yes, I'll go on the record as saying that. Yes. But yes, he can't. Yes, he will not finish okay. as a wide receiver one in any realm. Okay. He won't, he well, won't he, this year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Martavis Bryant. Where does he fit in in this scheme? Because obviously in Pittsburgh, he had his role. It was there. And then here comes Juju, a little 19-year-old or 20-year-old kid comes in and, and pretty much stole his spot and gets him traded. Do you think that Martavis is a better fit here with Derek Carr as a deep threat? Because I, I think he's in I think the same thing. I think he's in the same situation. You're going from Ben Roethlisberger as a number two slash three to now Derek Carr in the two slash three receiver role as well. Does it get any better? He's still a young guy. I think Martinez Bryant can have a good season here with Derek Carr. I think he could. I think this is a good three-receiver set. I don't think Jordy's going to be asked to do much. Well, I, I like Ryan Switzer as well. As the, I know it's not, not the sexy name, but I like Ryan Switzer as a guy that can come in in the slot every once in a while. If they do want to uh, want to run like four-receiver sets, which I, I think they will run a lot of because they're tight ends, Jared Cook, and he's just he's okay. He's nothing great, but I can see them running a lot of four wide receiver sets with Cooper, Nelson, Martavis Bryant, and Ryan Switzer. Man, I don't see that. Johnny Holton and Seth Roberts, Dwayne Harris, these guys are all uh, looking out or Marcel looking Aitman. in. And Marcel Aitman, I do like. I do like him. I think that he has a better shot at making the team than the other guys. I mean, I liked him at Oklahoma State. I don't know about how he's going to fit in with the Raiders, especially because he's You don't think Jordy Nelson, just, just based alone on, on touchdowns and red zone targets, it's possible that he gets like – Eight, nine touchdowns and like 600 yards. You know what I mean? I think he has value if you can get him super late in a, in a, in a draft. No. <laughs> he always does this. He, that's what he does. No. He, like, what do you mean? I don't see him straight super on. late. I mean, I like did, 14, uh, 15 rounds. How much round. more answer have to get? Well, I don't think he's going to be a wide receiver answer. one. What, but, okay, but even wide receiver that twos and threes. Wide receiver, wide receiver two, threes, and fours even are still getting drafted before the, to the, the back end of the, of the draft. You're saying that, yeah, as a steal, like in the 14th round or 13th round, but wide receiver twos and threes are, are going like in the fourth round, fifth round, sixth round. Like you're, 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 you're taking a wide receiver 12, which is 12 guys, and, now, and then your next statement is putting him back with wide receiver number 88. So, like, where does he fit in between number 12 and number 88 for you? Uh, back end to me is a flyer that you're literally taking as like a 
shit, just give me Jordy Nelson, I guess, and like he'll never see your lineup or starting lineup ever, starting three receivers. No, You're I saying that's the case? I see him. He can finish as a wide receiver three. Okay. Wide receiver two is not out of the realm of possibility, but I, I personally don't so see it. So somewhere between like 24 and 36. Right. Okay. I don't think they upgraded three touchdowns getting, more and he's a wide receiver one. By getting <laughs> okay. rid of Crabtree and bringing on Jordy Nelson. Uh, to me, that didn't make any sense. Okay. okay. Where they're at in their careers. Okay, but talent-wise, Money-wise, if he's then. healthy and he's not getting the number one coverage mm-hmm. and maybe even Bryant's the one going deep and pulling some guys there, you don't... I just feel like he can find a way to meet. If he's healthy, he's, he's kind of right. I feel like he can he be was healthy think, last year. Yeah, but with Hundley as quarterback. Devontae Adams did just fine. I agree with that. And look, I'm an Adams owner, but Adams is a little different because Hundley, okay, again, he was getting the first corner coverage. You have Adams getting the second corner coverage with a backup quarterback and they have no rapport whatsoever. So that was up to that was up for grabs. Yes, Adams had a great second half of the season with Hundley at quarterback, but I don't put all my eggs in that basket to say this because that Nelson is now over the top, like he's just completely done. I don't know what his dynasty relevance or like what his trade value is, but it's just speaking of this upcoming season, how can you not think that Jordy Nelson is going to have the, the number two corner against him with Derek Carr as his quarterback? How many targets was Crabtree getting? At least 120. Right. Okay, so Jordy Nelson gets 100 targets, and, and that's just... I'm just saying the chances of me owning Jordy Nelson in any league this well, year are pretty slim because, because, because somebody, else is is huh? somebody else is going to take him. Huh? Somebody else is going to take him before I, I, I'm okay. not taking him early, so I'll let somebody else take him. Uh, well, what's early? I'll take him in the fourth round. Oh no, I say I think he goes like in the sixth, sixth, seventh, eighth round. And okay, if you can get him in the eighth round, then he obviously has value. I'm saying that somebody's going to jump on him mm-hmm. before that, so he won't be on any of my teams because of his name cachet. Yes, yeah, someone will jump on him before the fifth round. I missed that question. Did I you hope ask so. him if he, no. he will draft him? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> okay. You hate Jordan Nelson. I get it. <laughs> this is my thing with the with the injury and him being healthy. I don't think he was fully healthy last year. And there's been a lot of times where we've seen guys get hurt, and it takes them kind of like a year to really get over that injury and be back to kind of the speed that we're kind of used to him. Granted, he's older and he's not going to get back to that spot. But I don't think last year he was fully kind of over that injury completely. I still think he was probably... You know, not nursing necessarily, but I don't think he was fully like ready. I don't. I know that I'm gonna get just completely bashed for this, and I'm sure there's gonna be YouTube comments or whatever. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Jordy Nelson finishes higher than Amari Cooper this season in fantasy points wise. I think that Jordy Nelson and Derek Carr have a full <laughs> training camp together, and they kind of they they click, and they can say, "Hey, look, Jordy, we can put you in the slot. We can put you as a red zone guy. He'll play anywhere. He's at that that point of his career that he's not that guy that says I have to be the number one wide receiver. He's not arrogant. He's not." Like that, he'll fit in where he can get in, and I think that it's very possible that Jordy Nelson outscores Amari Cooper this season. I don't think it's that outlandish. We are all over the map. You must be. You must be thinking that Cooper's going to drop everything. One season? No, I don't. I think that Nelson has more touchdowns than than Cooper. You can put that in the books right now. And (laughs) so, if Cooper fixes his drop issue, yeah, that's an easy fix. You think drops? I'm just. That's what I did. The quarterback change though. (laughs) It's, you're not going to fix that. Oh, we all agree they had a down bad year. They got rid of the offensive the coordinator. They got rid of everybody, basically. There was a lot of talk about totally get that. control through. Totally get they, that. Raiders fans hated their offensive coordinator. Totally get that. Now, if you have a guy that cannot catch the ball and he's dropped balls for his entire career, you don't just fix that by keeping the quarterback the same, keeping your situation the same as a wide receiver one, keeping the situation the same, meaning he's going to get the same cornerbacks that are guarding him. None of that has changed for Amari Cooper. Everything else has changed for everyone else on the team. Jordy Nelson, Martavis Bryant, all that's changed. What hasn't changed is the quarterback that's throwing him the ball and the offense that he's running in as a wide receiver one. So I'm not sure where he's going to fix that problem. If it's been three or four, this is his fourth season now, still hasn't fixed that problem. I don't see it getting any better for him. I think that Jordy Nelson is very sure-handed, and if you can get him the ball in the red zone, he's going to score touchdowns. Amari Cooper, you have to force-feed the guy. To say, look, I know you dropped the last two, but we're gonna give it to you again, okay? Like it's just okay. Uh, that's that is force seared, freedom. That's seared into everybody's memory. But that's the only time. That's all we know. Right. That's all we that's know. That's all we know. That's all we know. That's not okay. <laughs> that's all we know. I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of getting these guys having such a high pedigree and just staying on them for multiple seasons over and over and over again. Eventually, you have to move on from a guy and pack it in. This what, is season what? four. He had one down year. Mm, did he? Yeah, and you were the guy that was off of Todd Gurley, too, so come on. Exactly, bro. that's the only example you can give. Is the one guy that I said that I, I'm not, I wasn't all in on Todd Gurley by drafting him as a top three running back. I don't think it's that outlandish to, to 
to say that. Like, it's, it's a top three guy. Like, where Gurley was going was in the first round, the top four or five picks of redrafts. Like, that to me is saying, like, hey, I'll never own Todd Gurley because I didn't want to draft him as a top four guy after the season that he had. Same thing with Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's probably going to be going in the top two rounds of a redraft league, and that Zach, to me is way too high. Zach Ertz, you also did that too. Okay. Oh, yeah. And he had a pretty decent season last year. And the reason why I didn't like Zach Ertz was why? Because of injuries. Not because of his talent, but because me and you own him in two different leagues at the big boy, which is a very high, uh, you know, it was a $500 buy-in. And every single season that we drafted him, he missed multiple weeks, and then he played. Then he missed multiple weeks again, then he played. And you never knew when he was going to either be healthy or, or have a good game. Like, it was all over the place. So I didn't draft him because of that reason, not because I didn't think the talent was there. Well, I just knew you were off of him. That's why it is. Okay. That's all I was saying. Well, I make bold predictions. When I, do, when I say I'm off someone, I'm fully committed to saying I'm either on them or off them, and I don't play the fence, and that's why I can't – Sit here and pinpoint a name that you okay. have been on or off because you play the fence every damn time. A, so congratulations on that. A, there's a middle ground between playing the fence and having blinders on. Um, but we still have to be open to different the information, the data that comes in. You can't just completely be like, okay, I'm writing this guy off because right. it Not completely me off. somehow in a league like it did with yours, you were, you were very, had a bad taste in your mouth over that. And I, I get it. I get it. I've been there. Um, I think sometimes as a fantasy player, we have to be able to <clears throat> put that aside and actually kind of come to things with a fresh look sometimes because I think sometimes we're all guilty of being biased and it might not be warranted necessarily. Um, but man, dude, that's why I'm not in redraft leagues anymore. Like every league I'm in is either a dynasty, it's a super flex dynasty, a keeper league even. I have zero redraft leagues anymore and it's because I, I don't like the, the fact that I can draft somebody that's supposed to be a top five guy and he just doesn't produce and like you're, you're done or the guy gets hurt right away. The guy gets hurt, David Johnson is out for the rest of the year, and it's like, what do you do? No one really trades in a redraft yeah, league, so yeah. it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to bounce back from a major injury or from a guy having a, a number one draft pick just having an off year is just not a thing. Like You can't do that in redraft, otherwise you're done. Man, we are all, <laughs> all over the map. Well, Raiders sparked something in us because yeah. they're coming to Vegas, and I have opinions on them. I think the reason why they got uh, Doug Martin and Marshawn Lynch is these, they know these guys will not be here when they come to Vegas in 2020. These guys are all going to be off the books, and it's going to be Derek Carr, Amari Cooper will be the last two guys standing. Nelson will be gone, so will uh, Marshawn Lynch. And so will, the, the whole entire offense is going to be different by the time they get to Las Vegas. So I think that the move right now is to get veterans on the team, establish a good offense, and maybe they make a run in the playoffs, but I just don't see that happening. I don't even think they make the playoffs. I almost hope they don't, just so they get better draft picks, so they can bring in some of that young talent. But Okay, what, what's the plan then? If that's the thing when they're coming here to Vegas and they're getting everybody off the books, what's the plan after that? You get rid of everybody and they're all gone. I think they use these next two years to, like Jay just said, they use the next two years to like kind of piece together and get better draft picks and get younger so that when they do come here in 2020, they have a young, fresh team and it's not a bunch of stale veterans. Well, Gruden is on a 10-year plan. That first, that first stab was just a few weeks ago in this draft. And I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't very impressed with the way I, that draft went Well, they, I no. wasn't impressed. Oh, okay, it just I, they didn't draft fantasy relevant guys. Yes, no, it has nothing but... to do with that. They, they wanted. Uh, there's a couple of guys that they were looking at defensive wise, and guys moved up, and they were taken right before them. The Roquan uh, Smith, mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a, I don't know. But if they was... got offensive line. They got they got uh, left they tackle. Got Maurice they got... Hurst, who was okay. supposed to be a first round talent, and okay. he dropped because of uh, his heart, their regular heartbeat. Yeah. Okay, like so, I, but I'm saying again, they they did get pieces. They just weren't sexy pieces for fantasy, you know, fantasy players. Uh, I didn't say anything about fantasy. I'm talking as a team, as a team in general, how we're talking about coming to town. Right. Like, I, that has nothing to do with fantasy relevant guys. Uh, just as the Raiders coming in, um, they took the guy with the heart issue. Mm -hmm. They took, uh, our, our, what's the, uh, Arden oh. Key? Yeah. Uh, he's got some issues too. Colton like, Miller. Colton Miller. They, the guy, this, to me, they they were looking for, uh, I guess value, like you said, the one guy had a, what, uh, a good grade on him, but he fell because of the heartbeat and the medical kind of stuff. If he's over that, he could be a, a gem. Arden Key, if they could get him together, because this last year was a down year. In 16, he had a great year, and he was going to be coming out as a pretty high uh, draft pick, uh, or at least graded really high. Um, but they looked like they took these stabs at weird areas to get kind of value, that could pan out because they missed out on guys like uh, Rokon Smith and I think it was Davenport maybe they were trying to get and somebody moved up and the Saints moved up and grabbed and him moved up like right from them so they were sniped a couple times so I think maybe it would have looked better I guess but the way it panned out it's looking kind of shaky so hopefully some of these guys pan out 
Um, I think maybe the plan is not skill players being built necessarily because yeah, those mm-hmm. guys are probably gone, but gone. But uh, they drafted it. Their first couple picks were like big three hundred pounders, like you know, big dudes, big bodies. So maybe there's a plan with kind of building from the inside out a little bit with the Raiders. Hopefully, I've got my fingers crossed. Correct. I hope they're good when they get here. Yeah. They're going to come and go with that with Donald Penn too. The left tackle there is uh, he underwent uh, list rank surgery in December, Ooh. so he won't be ready for camp. And that was probably one of their best offensive linemen. He also had um, uh, offseason trouble just a couple weeks ago. Uh, where his wife had accused him of uh, domestic violence, and then she went back after she filled out a report, went back and said, no, nothing happened. So just that kind of stuff like lingers, but he's a guy that they need, and they need him ASAP, Donald Penn. Yeah, Liz Frank ain't nothing to play with. Especially when you're that big of a guy. Like, that's going to really hurt their line if he doesn't come back healthy. It's going to hurt his feet. You guys ready? For show. <laughs> you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. ready All right, crack let's it? crack it. Crack it. We're, at, we're already out of our hour. I thought your phone turned off after a couple minutes. Does it? 